everybody. It's Steve and Chelsea Scott with Come Follow Me. Hi, you guys. Welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is Dig, Defend, and Drink. We are doing Genesis 24 through 27 and February the 21st through the 27th. I read that all backwards. Welcome, everybody. You guys, welcome. If you're brand new, we just hit 29,000 subscribers. What the? That's cool. That's and incredible. we love gathering more people to learn the gospel together. So if you're brand new, welcome. If you're an oldie but goldie on our channel, we love you and we love all the comments. You guys, if you don't read the comments, you need to because there is so much dialogue going on, different insights, comments. We love hearing from you. And there was a lot of really good, amazing, <laughs> fantastic, and wonderful. Well, everyone's like, uh, Chelsea, oh, they're not on. dumb jokes. They're they're dad jokes. Just they keep on saying that Because of that, ladies and gentlemen, we have the award of the week. <laughs> For the joke. I have the award of the week for the dad joke for the week. And it goes to Jeremy Ward. Yay! Yay! You're cheering for a dad joke? Yay! <laughs> no, I like giving people awards though. Oh. Here you go, Jeremy. Take it. Jeremy, that's for you. And your fist bump. Boom. And your high five. Boom. And Bam. your heart. <laughs> I also want to do a shout out to Shalana, Sherry Chipman, and Charlene. Yeah. Uh-oh. No, it's Carlene. Carlene. There's so many S's. But Carlene, we talked and it was so awesome. In New Zealand... You guys. Oh, is that the Talofa? Talofa Carleen? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. All right. So here's your fist bump. Boom. And your high five. Ba bam. Thank you guys for your support. We love you. All right, guys. Grab your scriptures, your journals, and your scripture markers. It's time for us to connect up. This week's lesson as we talk. You can also find the handout at thestevescott.com. Guys, it's free. Go there, and you'll find all kinds of other fun stuff there as well. On a fun note, I talked to Carlene in New Zealand, and we were FaceTiming, and she was showing her me her journal, and she was like, printed off all your things that you make for the channel, these free downloads, and she was writing, she had all these questions and all these answers, and it was awesome. And so I told you, I told Stephen, he was really happy to hear that you were doing that. I was very happy. <laughs> Miss spelling mistakes and all. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Arc. No, I'm just kidding. Or the Herald Angel Sing. Actually, guys, remember my spelling mistake? No, don't remember it. But I went, I went to even get my gym pass renewed. I went to get my gym pass renewed, and he's like, <laughs> we saw your spelling mistake. And I was like, oh, wonderful. Um, <laughs> so embarrassing. Humble pie. Oh. Yes. Mm, mm. Delicious. I love humble pie. Can you guys turn your scriptures? Let's get open. Let's let's clarify just a couple things. As you're reading the Old Testament, there might be these beard scratching moments. <laughs> all right? Head scratching moments. Where you read the Old Testament and you go, huh? <laughs> There's going to be these moments. I promise. Throughout the Old Testament. <laughs> now, the reason I share that with you is sometimes... They don't jive. We are missing parts and pieces of the full story. It's not all there. And when you when you when it bumps up against modern revelation, what we've read in the scriptures in the past, what you understand about scriptures, sometimes you're gonna scratch your head. Un knowing that, yeah. give yourself some patience and we're gonna we're gonna help dig that out today. And I'm gonna teach you a way to dig that out in a way that you come out of your scripture study going, Oh, that was really good. Mm -hmm. The lost in, tr in translation, that's what it came to me, lost in translation, like it was all those translations, there's some sort of missing things in there and it's been lost. And that again, made me really grateful for the Book of Mormon because we have this very clear and pure doctrine that has only been translated one time and there's not all that weird little things in there. So as we, as we study today, Here's what we want to be able to do. We want to take the stories of the Old Testament. So today we get like Rebecca and Isaac and their and the marriage and them their their dating experience. We get the story of Jacob and Esau, and then we get the story of Jacob digging wells and all these marriages. So we're going to take these stories and we're going to we have to dissect out of them what the application and the purpose for us is. So if you're new to the channel, you're going to hear this for the first time. If you're if you're oldie but goldie, you're going to understand again. But repetition is a wonderful teacher. We want to take the scriptures from like me here now and them there and then. We want to be able to take that whole experience and we want to make application. We want to bring that whole experience of them and there and then to me, to here, to now. 
so that the stories come alive and we can go, what is the lesson we are supposed to learn? That I am supposed to learn. Yes. Now, there's first person singular means me here now. Um, plural would mean us here now. And them, there, them. We, want, we want it to be first person singular and internal. Now, that's going to require some work. That's why journals should come out. All right, so today's lesson, we're going to take the stories and we're going to focus on three different areas. And you'll notice the triangle that we have, birthright, covenants, and living water. We know, we know this isn't all-inclusive. If you want all-inclusive, we're going to have to do all that in one day and in one lesson. Not going to happen. But remember, we are working in Scripture sequentially, and that sequential means like line upon line. We're doing chapter by chapter. So we can't cover it all, but today we're going to cover this much. Mm -hmm. So here's a little, a little behind the scenes. Today we study, we study throughout the week and then we get together and we're like, okay, what did you learn? What did you learn? And then we'll kind of put it together. And as we we're getting together today, Sue's like, we're like, oh, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of I'm trying to get some clarity. And then I, what my favorite part is what Steve has like this brain of ideas, you know, so Hillary, he was like, I have an idea, you know, and it just comes in this revelation. That's what my ideas right look now. like when I'm like, man, yeah, science. And then it's like this, this pure, like you could just like the dark, like it just comes right through and he's just like, okay, let's do this, da, 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 and we'll add all the scriptures. So I really appreciate that gift. So that's what it looks like behind the scenes. Let's go, let's talk first, let's talk about covenants. Um, these whole things, this is a pattern that we are all, we all follow, all right? And so we're going to talk about covenants today in the story and context of Rebecca and Isaac and them getting married. Now, this is an interesting story. There's a lot of culture that's involved in this story, which is not what we would do today. Although some would believe that parents should arrange marriages and others. How trusting are you to send your servant to find your son a wife? And how trusting would... Would Isaac have to be to be like, son, we're sending out the servant to go find you a wife. What? <laughs> You're going to do what? Okay. All right. I trust you. Okay. So let's go in the scriptures. Let's go to Genesis chapter 24. The whole chapter is what you're going to read, and I wrote that there. We're going to paraphrase, and we're going to teach about the covenant part. So we're going 1 through 24. So here's the story. Abraham knows it's time for Isaac to get married. So he takes his has his servant to go find Isaac a wife. Now, the reason he wants to do that is because he wants his Isaac's wife to be part of that covenant relationship that they can keep and carry on. So he sends his, his servant. Now, his servant goes very prayerfully, very thoughtfully, very aware of what's what he's being asked to do. Yeah, and there's some signs there for him as well. So he'll he'll know her when he meets her from these different signs that happen. Okay. And so let's go to verse 15. Okay. Let's just start in verse 15. Okay. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold. Oh, wait. So let's set the stage. Oh, yes. he goes to the well. He goes oh, okay. to a well and he makes a plan. And here's his plan. I'm going to go and I'm going to get like the women will come and feed like water, get water. And if they water my camels, then I will know. Then I'll know. She's the right one. Now, I don't know. I don't suggest this for any young men that are out there being like, I know what I shall do. I go find a camel and then I go find a camel in a well and be like, woman, <laughs> give me the water. Like, that's not going to work for you in any way. Okay. okay. So we don't suggest that this be the application for you. And if you didn't know, Steve's really good at voices. So this is kind of fun. And it came to pass. It would be even better if you read your voices like that. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebecca came out. <laughs> okay, keep going. Who is born? And now I sound like, no, okay. <laughs> now you sound like King Julian. <laughs> Son of Melka, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher on, upon her shoulder. So she comes out, she has this pitcher on her shoulder. The damsel is very fair to look upon, and a virgin never had any man known her. And she went down to the well and picked, filled her pitcher and came up. And what does this teach you about Rebecca? What does this teach you about Rebecca? What does this teach you about her, her attributes, her character, and her preparation for to this be moment? married, yeah. Mm -hmm. Being virtuous as well. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. 
And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hastened and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had done giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also. So they have done drinking. And she hastened and emptied her pitcher into that the trough. That is a lot of water. And ran again to the well to draw water and drew for all the camels. That is a lot of that water. That is a lot. You guys, this isn't just like, hey, can you get me a drink of water? And you're like this little Sure. Shh. Here's your little drink of water. Right? This is a well. Pulling up water. Getting the water. Feeding cam camel. Camel. Have you water. ever? That's a lot of water. How much water can camels drink? Well, a camel sized trough of water. Yeah. It's a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And so she went above and beyond, which he, she was even, just just to be kind. So we're dissecting out of the story. You can see I'm teasing as I'm doing it in a way. But I want you to understand, like, we're dissecting out parts of, like, being morally clean. Uh, oh, here's Rebecca. Like, her diligence, her grit, her patience, her perseverance. You can see this in Rebecca. It's not just a test for Rebecca to be like... Well, let's see if she gets water for the camel. Like that's that would make her a great wife. That's not what we're. It's going on. No, all right, it's not. So there's more to it. Where did you end? Um, Twenty one. Yes. And the man wondering, at, you have no idea, do you? And the man wondering at her held his peace, to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous, knowing that this was happening. He still wanted to have the Lord confirm: Is this the right one? Is this is this right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and and he has this experience, and he goes, "No, she's she's the right one." Yeah, he knew okay? it was her. Mm -hmm. And so um, he went and talked to her family. Went and goes and talked to her family. Can I come and talk to your family? And goes and talks to the family, and the family goes, "Okay, yeah, they what's just going on?" Said yes, yes, and they said yes. You can definitely take Rebecca and marry your like. Your master's son, Isaac, the trust. Now, here's the other thing. Abraham, in his covenant keeping ability and in his family, also lived a life where they knew that marrying Abraham's family was also good and that she would be taken care of and provided for. It wasn't a one sided dealio, it was two sided, and both sides had been prepared. Now, we're talking about making and keeping covenants. This is like marriage marriage preparation, and testing your future spouse for marriage. Women, you don't do that, do you? Girls, you yeah. test men. Yeah, and do you test men? Huh? Do, you, do I test them? Did you, t did you test me? <laughs> yes. Did you see their eyes? She was like, of course I tested you. What are you, crazy? Yes, and there are some, you know, key attributes that you want in an eternal companion, right? Yes. And definitely someone who would be keeping their covenants. That would be an important one. <laughs> I was just thinking the scriptures when I tested you and it was fair to look upon. Oh. And I was like, <gasps> scriptural! <laughs> See, boys, young men, let me just have a little moment with you. When you find someone who is, <laughs> that you love, you'd be like, uh, mom, it's scriptural. I like her. Yeah. Who knew? Things you learn here on this channel are just amazing. Um, the reason why, the reason why we share these things is because when we're talking about making and keeping sacred covenants for an eternity, Rachel and Isaac have, a, there's a pattern there. We take them there and then, and we apply it to me here and now. Now you're probably not going to take a servant, but your servant might actually be your parents. It might be your family. It might be the other people that are included. I know when, when my oldest son got married and he brought home Laura and um, all of our kids, one by one, said, we love her. We love her. And now what has happened in that whole experience is they also have someone to gauge. And they go, um, we really love her. And we and she want has these attributes, and we want that to be part it, of our family. And it did raise the bar, didn't it? It she, sure did. She raised the bar in our family. Like our boys were like, "Oh, we like her. She is a really good person." So that's been a really good thing for our family. But I also want to talk to those who um, I've been speaking to a lot of women lately whose spouses have broken covenants, who are not doing the things like holding them and we'll talk more about that too with giving up your birthright but just keep being that kind of person 
Even though they have the challenges and struggles, keep being the covenant keeping amazing person that you are and keep developing these Christ-like attributes and you will be blessed. So keep going. Amen to that, right? Yeah. And you can feel that. This is marriage preparation. This is marriage prep. Covenant prep. This is covenant keeping preparation. So the story. So she meets, she comes, and she finds and sees. And while they have this experience, let's just look at this. Go to verse 58. This is after they called and said, and they made the decision that Rebecca was going to go with the servant. And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Agency, will go. First Nephi 3, 7, I will go. I will go. Okay. And now when they come and they find, and they were coming towards, in verse 63, and Isaac went out to, to, to meditate in the field at even time, praying. I don't know when this is. And, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, behold, the camels were coming. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. She went, boom, boom. Is that the man? Um, for she had said unto the servant, what man is that that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. And then, boom, off she goes, off the camel. I love that because that to me shows her faith, her yeah. dedication, her belief, but also shows, can we just like back up and look at her Isaac for, heart too, her, her and heart. Isaac is preparing to meet her. Yes. That's the cool part too. This isn't a one-sided covenant. Go figure. I'm just thinking of our children in the background. There is people that also are saying, man, we thought it was the kids that were fighting or yelling in, in our backyard. And when we opened our window and we realized our window wasn't shut and it was actually the Scott children in the background that were banging and screaming. On this fine afternoon, <laughs> they're playing currently a board game of Scrabble. Yeah, and so that's what they're supposed to they, be doing. They, um, they may be a little competitive from their mother. <laughs> and um, I usually give in on games like that. He's so usually really quiet, very quiet and reserved. Shy, not sarcastic. <laughs> All right, now let's go to this next part because we're going to go up to here. So the covenant here, covenants lead, is talked about birthrights. Now, when we talk about birthright, we can talk about Moses. We can talk about Abraham. We can talk about Enoch. We can talk about all this Noah. Remember in all the scriptures we've read so far, they've had their mountaintop experience, right? All of them have had it. We've talked about them. They've, they've seen and the Lord's opened up the windows of heaven to them. Well, Jacob or Isaac and Rebecca have two sons. They have Esau and Jacob. Esau is a bit of a hairy man. Okay, he comes out as a hairy child, and he's very. These are the other ones where you're like. I, I just love it. It's like it was very hairy. Red and um, hairy. And that's why I grew my beard for this lesson. And in this whole in these whole moments, we have Esau and we have Jacob. We are we don't have the full story. No. But we, but we do have some some parents who are trying to depict it. Knowing full well, the Lord understands the birthright blessings. Now, birthright blessings, or that mountaintop experience now, to me here now, in the Old Covenant, it was like patriarchal, passed down from father to oldest son, oldest son to oldest son, oldest son to oldest son. In this story, we get oldest son to the righteous son. Okay? Notice the change. And people, people will try to talk culture and talk. But the truth is, it's like from birthright father to, like, worthy son. So the Lord didn't make a mistake in this. And it wasn't like Jacob, although the scriptures set it up to be a trick. Can you imagine tricking heavenly father yeah. and being like, Oh, <laughs> I got the blessings. <laughs> but if we go back in at like ham in with Noah, remember how they tried to trick it. Remember the tower of Babel where they tried to trick it and be like, we're going to skip the covenant. Like they can't do that here in this story. Just remember that. Okay. Remember in the past what we've already read before you make assumptions in these short little verses. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it, there are some confusing parts to this. So we want to just really narrow it down to me here now, then yes. there them, now me here now. Okay? Okay, so we're going to go verse um, 29. Now, in verse 23, it talks about how Rebecca realizes there's going to be two nations. She receives... Revelation that there's two nations, two in her, in her womb. It's like these two kids are going to be two different kids. 
I don't know why I held my stomach. I've never ever carried a baby, but I was like, <laughs> in, the, in, in the belly. <laughs> um, I've never. I don't think women do that either. <laughs> but anyway, I'm on a roll today, folks. <laughs> Okay. okay, so let's go to verse 29. <laughs> These boys have grown up. They're two different people. Esau loves hunting. He's good in the fields. Esau and I would get along well. Um, and, but Jacob dwelt in the fields. and he Play man, but, dwelling but in he, tents. But he kept covenants. Can we repeat that? He kept covenants. Yes, he did. And Jacob, verse 29, sawed pottage. And which like lentils and food and grains, okay? And Esau came through from the field and he was faint. I think that's an understatement because you don't sell like this. He, he's not like a teenage boy getting a Big Mac. Okay. <laughs> and Esau said to Jacob, feed me. That is a teenage statement. Teenagers just underline that. And teenage boys, you can underline that too and say, mom, it's scriptural. Feed me, I pray thee with that same red pottage for I'm faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright, which you cannot do. You can't sell birthrights. You can't be like, you know what I'm going to do? I want to buy your covenant so I can go to heaven. So right there we can see it just in that statement that it's incomplete. Okay? Yes. It's incomplete. So you can underline it. That's fine. But that it goes contrary to anything we learn in the gospel of Jesus Christ about selling birthright or selling priesthood blessings or any of the you anything. You yeah, can't. You can't. Okay. Will you read verse 32? Yes. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drank and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. That's a phrase you should underline, right? D despise mean he set aside, did not regard, did not have faith in. And value. His birthright. Value is a big word. Now, our mountaintop experience or our birthright, what's our birthright blessing? Our birthright blessing as children of God is to receive all that our Heavenly Father had. To receive the promises, the promised blessings of Abraham and Isaac. To receive Abraham and Isaac and now Jacob's blessing of property, priesthood, posterity, promises, all of the things that we talked about a few lessons ago, right? This is that birthright, birthright. By birth, I am entitled through my obedience and I can expect to receive those blessings that the Lord has promised. Yes, absolutely. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we sell our birthright for? You got a question? <laughs> Here's one of my questions. What does Satan use to distract me from my birthright? Maybe this might be a little bit deeper question. Being distracted from keeping your birthright in. I think of birthright too as your divine potential. Like you're, you're a child of God in your divine potential along with your covenants. Like how powerful are we when we choose the Lord and we choose our covenants and we are choosing to follow the savior and doing the work um, but there are distractions that can lead us in various directions lots of them this would be a good time to turn off and write in your journal press pause have a conversation as a family as a group that's studying and be like what is it that satan uses to deceive or distract me from like promised birthright blessings mm -hmm. remember priesthood posterity the promises covenants what does he use to distract you? Remember, we've talked in the past that a distraction does not have to be evil to be effective. I mean, it's not like we would look at lentils today and be like, Mmm, <gasps> I'm willing to sell everything for that. Like, do you know what I mean? Delicious. Mmm, delicious. That is not... But in that moment, when, e, when Esau saw that his life and value and compare that to thy will be done... And Joseph Smith in, in the Doctrine and Covenants where he's like, I go as a lamb to the slaughter, but I as, I'm as calm as a summer's day. Like that, the feeling that our life, our physical life, to sell our physical life in regards to our spiritual birthright blessings would be foolish mm -hmm. to do. And it makes me think of addictions, different, different addictions that will keep us back or hold us back from our divine potential. That we're just not willing to let go of uh, another girl that i'm working with she has an addiction to something pretty serious but 
She is so determined to um, heal and to surrender this to the Lord. And I'm so proud of her and how far she has come. Um, but it has really been an anchor holding her back from her divine potential. She knows that. And she's like, I, I tell it like talking about compelling reason, like this, our compelling reason is um, our following our savior and getting to the celestial kingdom and receiving those covenants so we can walk that path and get to that place, eternal glory. And it's just, it's really inspiring. And if you're struggling with any addictions or any challenges like that, it can be worked through. You can heal from those things. And there is an art to it. But go to the bishop. Go go to the things that you need to do to repair and restore your spirit and get and, and keep your covenants. Receive them if you haven't received them. They're such a blessing and they are so empowering in your life. So we talk about birthright, we talk about selling our birthright, and our birthrights lead to covenants, and, and those covenants help us understand our birthright. We could draw arrows back and forth between these. Um, and then it leads us to living water. Now, this is a whole pattern that we all follow. As we understand our birthright blessings and our promises, and we don't sell those for messes of pottage, and when we do, that we repent and come back, return and make and renew covenants, and then we go to the living water. So one of the things that happened in these chapters and you might skip over it you might be like that is such a waste of my scripture markers and it's not go to chapter 26 verse 17 okay now you're gonna think um well let's go can we go to your scripture in john first do you want to do that first when jesus christ was traveling through samaria remember he met the woman at the well and the woman at the well that they valued this well this is jacob's well mm -hmm. all right <clears throat> so this is one of Jacob's wells, and it, it provided so much water and so much resources to the area. Jesus Christ sat down and said, woman, would you do And the whole dialogue and lesson happened. And this is what happened when he, she said, really, do you think you're better than this water? Okay. okay. So we are in John chapter 4, four. verses 13 through 15. Yeah. So Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again but whosoever drinketh of the water that i shall give him shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life the woman saith unto him sir give me this water that i thirst not neither come hither to draw this is what we're talking about mm -hmm. um and we want to be able to talk about digging defending and drinking from the water in what in the well that comes from Christ. Yes. So look what happens in verse 17. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerard did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well, and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well, and from and for that they strove not, and he called the name of it Rehuboth, and said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in this land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared unto him the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there, and called the name of, upon the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there, and Isaac's servants digged a well. You'll notice that Abraham, or Isaac is digging, defending, and drinking from wells that his father had also digged, defended, and drank from. As a result, Isaac receives the same promised blessings and the covenants of his father, Abraham, or Jacob does as the same as Isaac and Abraham. All of them, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You notice how we use all their names synonymously? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
the blessings of all of them who digged wells, found Christ, defended Christ, and then drank from the living water. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. I love water. I love studying water. I don't even like water people out there. And like, <laughs> there's another thing about Chelsea, right? <laughs> there's a lot of things, but like the living water, the healing water, like how it can heal you, but it's through Christ. It's his right. And the power of that. So I love the living water. You're drinking the living water. This, that is a symbolic of our savior. And I thought even as I was um, partaking of the sacrament today, that just just drinking this living water, this this water that has been blessed for us to renew our covenants and to receive that living water, the uh, the symbolic of his of his blood, the, the water and drinking it. I just really reflected on that today when I was sitting in sacrament meeting. So grateful. So any anywhere you are, like you have to have water. You cannot not have water. You your body needs water to survive just think of that so our spirits need the living water to thrive and to live and to survive and it's our savior jesus christ and i love the symbolism between the two and then also at, they built an altar at the end so they're digging these wells they're defending them and then they're drinking of the water and then they're building altars which they were doing of gratitude, like what are we doing as well in that way? What are we What are we doing to be grateful and telling our Heavenly Father that we are grateful and focusing on that gratitude because we are so blessed to know and to have this information, this knowledge that has blessed our life, like having who we are, our birthright, right? And all the covenants that we have available to us and it's not just us, we're gathering in. So if you're not a, a member of our, of our faith and you're watching this, we, we want you to join us. This is not an, an exclusive thing. And then having that living water, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who fuels us, who fills us up, who um, brings light into us and perspective and, yeah, again, gratitude for all of that. So what are you doing to dig your well? What are you doing to defend your well? And what are you doing to drink from that well? That is Christ. Now, digging requires faith and action. Effort. De defending requires effort, especially in the day that we live. That's why today's lesson is called Dig, Defend, and Drink. It's part of the process. Someone just won the Scrabble game, apparently. <laughs> we probably, like today, you can hear um, family life at the Scots. We love them. Mm -hmm. Um as we dig, defend, and drink from the wells that spring up unto everlasting life, we will see our birthright blessings, that mountaintop experience, which will lead us to make more covenants, which will lead us to drink from the water, which will lead us to understand our birthright blessings. Do you see the pattern that happens in the scriptures? So this story isn't just about find like camels and wells and marriage and all these strange things that happen in the Old Testament. It's really about us. So that we can do this too. Mm. What were you laughing at? <laughs> well, like just a few, the, like you were saying the strange things that happen in the New Testament. But like... In the Old Testament? In the Old Testament. I keep on saying the New Testament, but it is the Old. But just, just those, you know, strange stories that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> but really getting to the meat of what this is trying to teach us and really applying it to ourselves. So some of my questions, like, how can I more freely appreciate my covenants how can I appreciate them more and be grateful for them more? And then how can I dig, defend, and drink from Christ's living water? How can I do that in my life? So write that down, answer that for yourself, and really get intentional about turning things up just a little bit in your life. You know, just like a few dials, or maybe you're like ready to go, like we're ready, we're ready to keep going and move forward. And if you haven't received your covenants, if you haven't gone to the temple, if you haven't been baptized, I encourage you to take the next step. Allow those blessings into your life so that you can be just magnified. It, it, like, how do you describe it in words? It's like all those feelers out there. It's that feeling. It's like the empowering feeling of the gift of the Holy Ghost and, and being empowered with our covenants. And we're, we're like rising up to help with this work that the Lord has us to do. So, I really encourage you to do that if you have if you have not. It is the greatest 
most wonderful blessing in the whole world. Guys, we love you. Thank you for watching today. We hope this helps you as you study the Old Testament. We hope that you're writing in your journals, like highlighting your scriptures, that you're having conversations about the gospel of Jesus Christ, that this deepens your faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that you're able to share it with others. Um, Chelsea and I do this um, out of our Service. love for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, we don't receive anything as a result of it except for friendship and love and kindness and strength and testimonies that come from you. And we, and appreci awesome. we appreciate all those who share these videos, all those who like a video, all those who comment down in the videos. All those things help. All those, and messages. Here's, here, all all those, those things messages. help expand the YouTube algorithm so that it shares it with more people who are looking. Mm -hmm. And we ask you to do it just to share so that others will know. All right? Today's word of the week. Today's word of the week is a three words of the week, which is dig, defend, or drink. Okay, use those in, a com in the comment down below. Tell us where you're from. Tell us about what you learned this week in this week's video. Okay? We love you guys. Have All right. a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.